The hour of convening having arrived, all members will please report to the floor of the House and take your seats. All members will report and take your seats. Mr. Clark, you want to ring the bell? to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Well, hello Friday. I almost dispensed with a roll call this morning, but then I thought, now I'm gonna reward those that are here. Let, let y'all vote. The chair wants to give a reminder before we convene this special session we sent out a um, advisory on the COVID-19 protocols for the special session those of you that are reaching for your mask that's what I was going to talk about um, mask on the floor in the chamber are mandated and in committees not in your office uh, you don't need one and if you're at a microphone uh, in here you do not need one so thank you for your uh, cooperation on that we will um, begin this beautiful day with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 68th House District, the Chairman of the Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee, Chairman Jay Collins. Chairman Collins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a joy to be able to present the chaplain of the day today. Uh, Pastor Eddie Allen comes to us from my hometown. Uh, Villarica, Georgia, where he has been the pastor of the First Pentecostal Church there in Villarica for the past 30 years. He has two children, a lovely wife, Miss Penny, and uh, he, he's been a vital part of our community for a, for a long time. His family's been ingrained in our community uh, for decades. Those of you who know me might have heard you, uh, or might have heard me talk about my dad. He was the youngest of 17 kids. And uh, his dad passed away when he was a young man, or actually just a few years old. Brother Eddie's father had a store there in my, uh, in my town, and uh, my dad went to work there as a, as a young teen. And his dad really mentored my dad and uh, showed him a lot of things about life. And uh, their family was just very good to my family uh, early on. And Eddie and my dad grew up and ran around together. And uh, I called my dad to say uh, that Eddie was going to be uh, the chaplain of the day today. And my dad said, you know, son, he said, I've got a lot of friends. He said, but none that I would trust any more than my good friend, Eddie Allen. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome uh, Pastor of the Day, Pastor Eddie Allen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor and privilege to stand before such a distinguished audience. Uh, Jay, Representative Jay Collins, thank you for the invitation. To begin with this morning, I want to read an excerpt from 
the Apostle Paul's writings to the church at Philippi. He was encouraging unity, and I think the message still stands clear today in the world that you and I are living in. He begins with grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Let each of you look not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. And then he says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Can we bow our heads in prayer this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, you are our God and eternal King. You have created all things, and you are the source of every blessing. We ask for your guidance and yield to your direction. We pray that we would humble ourselves before you today, and that you would lead us in the way that we should go. Father, enlighten us that we may know your will. We desire your glory and blessing in all that we do. We thank you for each and every one who is in this room. We ask that you would work mightily in us today. Your word says that all things work together for the good of those who love you. Father, we love you. We place our hearts and our minds in your hands so that you may direct us. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we will pledge the allegiance to the flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sometimes you can say a lot briefly. And my Baptist preacher friend, Quality's better than quantity. Over this way. Over this way. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. Always. Always. Be well. Chair recognizes the Secretary of the Committee on Information and Audits, Representative Wes Cantrell. Mr. Speaker, it's the honor of my lifetime to pinch hint today for the incomparable and unreplaceable Chairman Don Hogan and to let you know that your Committee on Information and Audits has read the 171-page journal of the previous legislative day and found it to be correct. And furthermore, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> in the words of the great philosopher Yogi Berra, always go to other people's funerals, otherwise they won't come to yours. <laughs> Chairman Hogan would have been proud. <laughs> Secretary Cantrell, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none, and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. 
Mr. Burns, Hunter 59th, moves following establishes the order of business during the first part of the period unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. Reports of standing committees. Morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none, and the resolution is adopted. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 10 EX by Representative Wilson of the 80th, Oliver of the 82nd, Evans of the 83rd, a bill to amend an act to authorize the governing authority of the city of Brookhaven to levy an excise tax. Senate Bill 1 EX by Senator Kennedy of the 18th, Couser of the 46th, Duggan of the 30th, Gooch of the 51st, Burke of the 11th, and others, a bill to provide for the composition and number of state senatorial districts. Senate Resolution 5 EX by Senator Dixon of the 45th, Goodman of the 8th, Hatchet of the 50th, Anderson of the 24th, Strickland of the 17th, a resolution ratifying Go Governor Brian P. Kemp's executive orders. Through second readers. Reports of standing committees. The clerk will read. Representative Bonnie Rich, the 97th District Chairman of the Committee on Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment is that under consideration the following bills of the Senate. It's instructed me to report the same back to the House following recommendation. Senate Bill 1EX do pass. Respectfully submitted Representative Bonnie Rich of the 97th District Chairman. That completes the reading of the reports of standing committees. All right, we're going on now to morning orders. We're going on to morning orders. We have a number of morning orders today, and the chair is going to ask members uh, to con limit their remarks to two minutes each. Uh, please give the members in the well your attention and respect. The chair recognizes for a morning order Representative Donna McLeod. Representative McLeod. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. On Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021, 16-year-old Timothy Barnes Jr., AKA Tim Tim, was murdered by her classmate while waiting for his school bus around 6.30 a.m. Timothy was a student at Central Gwinnett High School, in fact, the high school that my daughter graduated from in 2004. He loved school and he loved sports. He worked at the McDonald's in Grayson, Georgia. Timothy was the youngest of five children for his mother, Latoya Nicholson, who was home recovering from a car accident when she received the news that her son was gunned down. Timothy will be laid to rest on Saturday, November 13th, 2021 at 3 p.m. at the United Methodist Church on Beaver Room. Our deepest sympathy goes out to his mother, his, his siblings, his family, and friends. We ask for a brief moment of silence for Timothy and the family who are now left behind to mourn his loss. Thank you very much. Chair recognizes Representative Frazier, Representative Al Williams, Chairman Parrish, and Representative Hughley for a morning order. Thank you, Mrs. Speaker. To all my colleagues that are gathered here with us today, we are here to honor a beautiful, beautiful, remarkable leader that we lost in September. Ms. Deborah McGee McClary, the CEO of the Sickle Cell Foundation for the state of Georgia. I received a call on September the 12th, actually from Miss, and we call her Deb, from Deb. It's a call that I will never ever forget, and a call that I hope many of you will never receive. It was a call to tell me goodbye. She called to tell me thank you for your service. 
Thank you for all of you all that are gathered here that have helped our constituents, over 7,000 that live with this dreadful disease every day of their lives. She fought her own battle, but she was always there for every constituent here in Georgia for sickle cell. She was a woman of remarkable poise. She cared for a cause that her father, a physician, and medical colleague and friend started back in 1971. In 2012, Deborah McGee McClary was named the president and CEO of the Sickle Cell Foundation of Georgia. There she led an incredible team. The Sickle Cell Foundation uh, Board of Directors staff is here, her family um, and her children that are stretched across in four states are actually on live watching us now. For those who knew her for the many visits she made here at the Capitol during Sickle Cell Advocacy Day, will forever remember Ms. McGee McClary as a woman of incredible focus and resolve. And she never forgot what her real goal was, and that was helping our constituents who live with this disease. I just want to say to the family, we, we sent our sincere condolences to the family and to our Sickle Cell Foundation. But just know, over the 30 minutes that I talked to her, which I did not know would be my last conversation. I told her that we would continue the fight here at the state capitol to make life better for all that lives with sickle cell disease. At this time, I would like to have a moment of silence to honor this remarkable Georgian. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Nope. Chair recognizes Chairman that. Cooper for a morning order. Thank you very much. Colleagues, I know that most of us are looking forward to Thanksgiving, but I'm asking you to go a little farther out and think about Christmas. Every day when we come in to the Capitol and we go out, I pass two boxes down there, and they are very empty. They are the Toys for Tots box for children, needy children, who may get very little for Christmas. So I'm asking you to stop by Walgreens or on your way home or another pharmacy or a toy shop and pick up a little toy and bring it back with you when you come to the Capitol on money and Monday and put it in that box. Let's fill that both of those boxes to the top. I mean, this was at Walgreens. It's a cute little tea set complete with food and spoons and cups and saucers. It was $7 at Walgreens. But that $7 will bring a lot of joy to some child on Christmas morning. So I hope you'll join with me. Let's fill those boxes up. Thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Chairman Chokas for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues, and happy Friday. Uh, rarely do we get to share things from the well that can actually save a life. And especially with the COVID lockdowns, there's been an increase in domestic violence. And Governor Kemp's initiative to combat sex trafficking has shown that we all need to help these powerless victims. I thought that I would uh, like to share with you the international nonverbal sign for help. Learn it now. Uh, it was created by the Women's Funding Network of Canada and has already saved lives in the UK. Here it is again, hands out, thumb in, fingers down. Use it, recognize it, and act upon it. If you see it, please call 911. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Maynard for a morning order. Chair recognizes Representative Holly for a morning order. <laughs> mm. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Just want to say that my heart is going out. I'm sure as many of us are here with those who are working in the John Deere factories throughout our state. We realize that for an American company that has provided this state with the wealth of agriculture has been able to bring in, realize too that when it comes to the workers and their families, it's necessary for us to remember them, especially as we go into this holiday season, that wages are important. And as much as we believe that for these factories that oftentimes may have robots, this is, let me tell you, so oftentimes we have men and women who are working hard every single day to make sure that they can not only provide food for their families, but that they can have a future. So as we wait in the fourth week, while these labor negotiations must be had with the workers, the United Auto Workers, and these John Deere facilities, let us remember that as while we claim to have a full love for this country and our manufacturing traditions, we have to make sure that we are taking care of our American workers. I stand with you now. Thank you. All right, that completes morning orders. Mr. Clark, we don't have a local calendar today. Okay. Clerk will read the caption to a group of privilege resolutions. Commending STEM Atlanta women and for other purposes that completes the reading of the privilege resolutions. Is there any objection to adopting the privilege resolutions? The chair hears none, and the resolutions are adopted. All right, we have um, we have some birthdays today. Today, I'm I'm excited about this one. The birthday of Representative Billy Mitchell. Wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> On Sunday, we've got the birthday of Representative Dwayne Hill. <laughs> Chairman Butch Parrish. And Representative Sandra Scott. For what purpose does Representative Al Williams rise? Parliamentary inquiry, State Mr. Speaker. your inquiry. I'd like to lodge a formal protest that we showed up today in spite of Billy Mitchell's birthday. <laughs> well, had I known, we would take it off. We could have taken off, we can take off some next week and trade for the week after. <laughs> yes, yeah, everybody's thinking about that one. All right, we have an announcement. Uh, chair recognizes the chairman of the House Rules Committee, Chairman Smith, for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House Rules Committee will meet Monday at 9 o'clock in room 341. Monday at 9 o'clock. Thank you. That completes the announcements. Chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I move that this House stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Monday, November the 15th, 2021. The majority leader has moved that this House be adjourned until Monday, November 15 at 10 o'clock a.m. 
All those who favor the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes appear to have it. And this house will be adjourned until Monday morning at 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs>